This is Chris with Dive Zone Scuba for another technical diving tips, techniques, and trips video. Hello divers, thanks for joining me today. Today what we're going to talk about is Trimix and in particular we're going to talk about one of the least understood subjects in any Trimix course and this is how to calculate how much helium that you need for a particular dive. I believe part of this problem is the heavy dependence upon Trimix tables for the END and the actual depth. So what we're going to do in this particular video is we're going to go through the background calculations that are used to determine how much helium you need for a particular equivalent narcotic depth and a particular actual depth. So once we go through the background calculations, it will be much easier for the student to understand this process. So our learning objective uh, for this video is the process of how do I determine how much helium do I need for a given dive. And uh, this can be important for many divers uh, given the uh, high cost of helium uh, and the interest in minimizing the cost of doing a particular dive safely. The first thing I need to determine is whether or not oxygen is going to be considered narcotic. And this varies between uh, certification training agencies. We are going to consider oxygen as a narcotic for the purposes of this video. Here's the calculation process. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to select a specific equivalent narcotic depth. This is the depth at which you would experience narcosis if you were diving with air. The effects of nitrogen narcosis vary greatly between individuals. So at a particular equivalent narcotic depth, some individuals may experience more or less nitrogen narcosis. And these requirements vary between certification agencies. PADI, for example, uh, in many cases considers 130 feet to be acceptable, while other agencies such as GUE require a 100 foot END. Once we select an equivalent narcotic depth, we must then calculate the atmosphere's absolute for that equivalent narcotic depth. You may remember from an earlier course, perhaps your nitrox course or a early technical diving course, that to calculate the uh, atmospheres that you're going to be at for any particular depth, that you're going to take the depth and add 33 to it and then divide by 33. So this will give you the number of atmospheres uh, that you're experiencing at any depth. So the first thing we're going to use is that equation uh, to calculate the ATAs for the equivalent narcotic depth. And this is going to be equal to the desired equivalent narcotic depth plus 33 divided by 33. Next, we need to determine the actual depth that we're going to be looking at for the dive. Once we've determined the actual depth, we're going to calculate the actual depth atmosphere absolute. So if you want to calculate the actual depth atmosphere's absolute, you're going to take the actual depth that you're going to be doing the dive at, you're going to add 33 to it, and then you're going to divide the whole thing by 33. Once we have all that, what we're going to do next is calculate what percentage of helium is needed for that actual depth to achieve the desired equivalent narcotic depth. It's high time for an example. So what we're going to do is uh, we want to dive to uh, a depth of 200 feet and we want to use uh, an END of 130 feet. So what we're going to do is calculate uh, the fraction of helium needed uh, provided that we are going to uh, have O2 narcotic. So I'm actually gonna illustrate this uh, two different ways. Uh, the first way that I'm gonna illustrate it is uh, with a method that uh, should make uh, intuitive sense. And then after that, uh, we're going to go uh, with the straight uh, equation calculations that you would use once you understood the uh, calculation process. So here we're calculating the equivalent narcotic depth, atmosphere's absolute uh, for 130 feet. And again, we're assuming that O2 is narcotic. Uh, so um, we have 130 feet uh, plus 33 feet divided by 33 feet, and this yields uh, five atmospheres absolute for our equivalent narcotic depth. 
Next, we're going to calculate the actual atmosphere's absolute for our planned dive to 200 feet, again with O2 being narcotic. So we have 200 feet plus 33 divided by 33, and that gives us uh, a total of seven atmospheres absolute for our actual depth. All right, so uh, here's the somewhat tricky part. We're going to calculate the fraction of helium. And so uh, we're going to put on the left side of the equation the five ATAs, uh, which is your equivalent narcotic depth uh, ATAs. And then we're going to multiply that by a term, one minus the fraction of the helium. So this represents uh, the total uh, narcotic uh, percentage that you're going to be dealing with with your gas. So we then multiply that term by the seven ATAs, uh, which is our actual depth. So this equation basically uh, is attempting to balance the ATAs on both sides. So how much do we need to reduce the effect of the narcotic gases uh, when we are at seven ATAs? And the percentage of narcotic gas is reduced by the fraction of helium. So if we do a little bit of uh, mathematical manipulation, we have the fraction of the helium is going to be equal to 1 minus 5 ATAs divided by 7 ATAs. So this tells us if we need an END of 130 feet and we're actually going to dive to 200 feet, uh, what we need to have is a, approximately 30% of helium in our mix. Now that we understand the calculations, uh, we can actually make a condensed equation. So this would be the fraction of helium would be equal to one minus uh, the term with the numerator uh, END plus 33 divided by the depth plus 33. So in our particular example, that would mean it would be equal to one minus 130 plus 33 divided by 200 plus 33, or again, uh, 0.30 fraction or 30% helium in the mix. And if you're willing to subject yourself to a bit more mathematics, you can also manipulate this equation to calculate the equivalent narcotic depth. So plugging in our numbers for a mix of 30% helium, we get an END of 130 feet. So now that you know how the calculations work, uh, you don't have to feel guilty if you need to go back and use the tables. If you do have a copy of the tables at your disposal, uh, it can be very easy to use. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, if you don't have any tables, uh, you might have to go back to using the formulas. One advantage of using the tables is that you don't need a calculator like the kind you might find on an app on your phone. I do have a condensed table in my wet notes, and that's what I usually use. This is Chris with Dive Zone Scuba. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe.